and as we work through the, and it's going to be all year, when we approach one of these problems, there might be three, four, five, six, seven, thirty different ways of doing them. Okay? I'm going to do them with you multiple ways because my fear is that if I do it just one way, there might be half of us that don't understand it that way or don't see it that way. So do it. And that might help everybody but two or three people. Okay? I'm going to show the third way, hopefully, that one of those three ways is accessible for everybody. Does that make sense? Okay? So you might say, we got the answer. Let's go on to the next one. I'm going to rehash and talk about alternative ways that you can go through them. Because what happens when you're a person that pigeonholes yourself into only one way, and then we get to another problem, and that one way that I've been using maybe doesn't work for that problem. I would want alternative approaches, right? So hopefully open your eyes to all the different things that we could do here uh, to solve for these variables. Um, opens more doors for you in regards to solving them. It also allows you to kind of understand, I think, your theorems and your, your properties and all that kind of stuff um, collectively a little bit better than what uh, we currently know. This. As I as I work through this problem, though, guys, I want you guys to look at that. And a lot of people ask questions like, what do I need? What parts up there are being uh, are, are useful to me? Okay. Um, and, and here's my argument. If I were to go up and ask you to just highlight the lines or rays that make the angle that they're talking about, okay, would you guys agree that that is angle that is being represented by 19 lines? I'm going to highlight that, okay. Would you guys agree that this is the angle created by or identified by X? I'm going to highlight that, okay. This would be the angle identified by Y, right? Okay. And then here's my question. Did, did this line here create any of those angles? Did that red line create any of those angles? Or was it part of any of those angles? No, absolutely not. So what's that mean to me? Yeah, it, it, it's an optical roadblock. Okay? It's something that's in there to confuse you. Let's get rid of it. I get rid of it. Does it now simplify my picture and make it look like the traditional parallel line cut by a transverse what we've been dealing with? Okay. Um, so now, what could you tell me about 19Y and X? Okay, they're corresponding. So if they're corresponding and the lines are parallel, what's the relationship between them? Very good. Yes. X, X equals 19Y or 19Y equals X. Either way, we write that. Okay. Um, now there's some other things that we can do here. Okay. Because when I saw, I look at that, that we call that, we, we say that X is solved for in terms of Y, or X is expressed in terms of Y, meaning this is isolated. That's all by itself. But on the other side, it's not a numerical value. I can only know what X is once I know what Y is. Does that make sense, everybody? To say X is solved for in terms of Y. Um, if I did this, if I divide both sides by 19, that would be the equation that says Y is solved for in terms of X. Okay? Um, and that's an issue for us because we can't provide now a numerical value for either of those variables. So we need another relationship, right? What's another relationship that you see up there? Balance? X plus Y equals 1 in. Are you you're using these two here, right? Okay. So X plus Y equals 1 in. Y. For a linear pair. Okay. So we've got X plus Y, linear pair, linear pair is supplementary, right? Okay. So that's the thing I want to do, guys. I, a lot of times when you, you give me a relationship, I'm going to ask Y. Okay. Because I think you know, there are times because the, the relationship of 180 shows up a lot of different ways throughout this course. Um, and, and if you got stuck at some point and you just guess, I'm going to add things up to equal 180, that, that might work for you in that situation. Okay? Um, so I want to make sure that you know specifically why uh, you can do that. So that's, that's that reason. Okay? Did anybody try this? Anybody say, I'm going to take this 19Y and put it right there. 
Is that something I can do? Okay. Now, what could you say about these two things? Same side anterior. So now I can say 19y plus y equals 180, right? Because same side anterior angles are supplementary. Does that make sense, everybody? So those are the kind of the alternate approaches that you could use. Now, I'll, I'll, we'll come back to that here in a moment. Let's, let's solve the ones that we had here. If you didn't, create, if you didn't transfer any values, I think those are the, the initial kind of simplest uh, equations you might come across without moving anything and making any other additional statements. So what do I need to do here? If x equals 19y and x plus y equals 180, it's a system. But what's the best thing to do? How would I solve that system? X is 19y. Yeah, you take that 19y, you plug it in right there, wouldn't you? So I have 19y plus y equals 180. That's 21. Equals 180. So then y is 9, right? Y is 9. Now, now that I know what y is 9, can I plug that back in up here and say x is equal to 19 times 9? So what's that give me? 20 times 9. 180, right? But I, I did 119 too many, correct? Okay. I'm sorry, I did 19 too many. 19 too many. So let's subtract that 9 out of 180 and you get 171. Okay. So x is 171, y is 9. If I plug that back into my picture, we should have kind of a built in check here. Plug 9 in there, plug 171 in there. Are they a linear pair? Yeah. Plug, plug a y of 9 in here, I get 171. So it's 171 equal 171. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, like I said, there's, there's alternate ways of doing this. But the, the idea is, even though with these alternate ways, alternate kind of relationships that we set up, we're probably at some point still going to get kind of that idea, okay, where we get 20y is equal to 180 at some point. So I said earlier, did anybody do this? Transfer the 19y there. And then we said, well, this y and that y, or sorry, this y and this 19y are same side interior, right? So we add those together. Does that give me exactly what we had right there after we did our substitution? Yeah. Guys, okay. so you can use that approach. You can use that and, and, and determine it that way. Okay, yeah, so, so, so you, took, you took this Y right here and you brought it down here, is that what you're saying? Okay, that's fine. That's absolutely, because they're corresponding, right? And if they're corresponding, they're congruent, I can transfer them like that, and now that gives me that 19Y and that Y down here to be supplementary, okay? So you, and there's, guys, I, I don't want to say endless, but there's a lot of different ways that you can start moving things around and coming up with those relationships, okay? I don't know that this would be extremely intelligent in regards to saving us time, but what do you know about that angle, and even that, that angle right there, even though that bottom one that I just put an arc in doesn't have an expression there, what do you know about those two red angles? They should be what's going on? They should be supplementary, okay? So if they're supplementary, they add up to 180, right? But doesn't it mean that this one has to be 180 minus whatever x was? Does that make sense to everybody? If x is 10, this is going to be 180 minus 10, right? If x is 100, it's going to be 180 minus 100. You know what this is y? Did I say y equals 180 minus x? And now when I come up to this equation here, could I plug in x equals now 19, but y is 180 minus x? Again, it's not the most kind of obvious or easiest thing to do here. But when I do this, I think this turns into uh, 3420 minus 19x. And that gives me x over there, right? So I add 19x to both sides. And guess what I get if I take 3420 divided by 20? 171. 
And that's the same value I had for X, right? Plug that X in right here. 180 minus 171. Nine. Okay. So there's a lot of different. I took the door off of it. It's still squeaking. The pans are squeaking. Um. <laughs> You guys, you guys will quit sleeping and it won't scare you. Does it make sense? Does it make sense that we have alternate approaches? And that's every single because this problem, guys, you will not see. Let me repeat. You'll see it in a test or a quiz, something like that, right? Um, but the the next problem is not going to be like that. It's not going to. You're not going to see ten of these in a row. You're going to see, um, you know, the next one is completely different, right? Okay. But hopefully some of the things that we learned as we were trying to use alternative approaches here might be an approach in this one. All right. So problem to problem, it's not like algebra was. And, and this is just math in general. Um, if we're using our geometry and our algebra to address kind of real life thing, okay? Um, physical relationships. Every physical relationship is a little bit different, all right? Uh, and we need to be able to kind of address that new problem as something we've never seen before, okay? Um, and, and that's the thing. People want, well, how do I do this one? Well, you, I can show you those steps, but that might be the last time you ever see something just like that one, all right? Um, if we look at this one, okay? So there's not a whole lot of algebra to do here in this one. But I think people were getting lost uh, in finding one of our variables, okay? Uh, because they forget to look at one set of transversals uh, become very useful here. Uh, I do think though a lot of people probably see obviously these parallel lines, right? Don't do it again. These. Do you guys agree that those blue ones there are parallel, and then we got this transversal across the middle, right? I'm going to identify the angle that those parallel lines and transversal create. Be that angle there, and it be that angle there, right? Okay. This Y, is Y created by any of those things? No. Why the... Cause Y stops like right there, right? Okay, and we don't have that highlighted. Um, if I remove the picture, okay, do you see the relationship now? What do you know about that? Good. If the alternate interior for 86, so it's got to be 86 itself, right? Okay, alternate interior angles need to be congruent. So X is equal to 86. So now, that's all that those parallel lines and that transversal gave me. So what I need to do then is look at a, another transversal. So maybe I think most people are going to see that transversal there. All right. So would you guys agree if that angle is being created by that transversal parallel line and that one as well, right? So this is 44. Is V. When I take the picture out, what's the relationship? Alternate interior, so V is 44. Okay. Now here's the thing: you might have found V first and then found X, right? Or you might have been a person that says, "I'm going to try to find Y first. Look for that." You, when doing these, and even though they're alphabetical, and maybe even in math it tells you have to type X in before Y shows up and it gives you that bubble to type in Y or that box to type in Y. X might not be solvable first. You might have to go through and find Y and B before you can solve for X. Okay? Um, are those the only set of parallel lines, though, in this problem? No. So we're going to look at the... Okay. And now I'm going to look at that trend. So I think most people see those transversals on the inside, right? I right, kind of call those diagonals for that, that quadrilateral. 
Um, we create that angle there and that angle there. Can you guys see if those are alternate interior angles? Okay, and this one's Y, and that one's Y. Remove the picture like we've been doing. Does that give me anything? That's all for Y? No, it doesn't give me anything. Y is equal to Y. Well, yeah, that makes sense. So y is itself. Okay? So that is a true fact, but it doesn't yield anything that's, that's beneficial for us. So it happens quite a bit. Come back. Try something else. Okay. So trying... That transversal. You see W, right? And this angle down here is going to be 22, correct? Pull that out. What's W equal to? 22. Okay. That's all right. Can we do this? Why are we not solve for? Why? But well, we've looked at every single transversal that is crossing the interior of that quadrilateral, right? But remember, the definition of a transversal is just a line that passes through two parallel lines. So if I look at well, we have that parallel line right there, that parallel line right there, we look at these transversals that look through the interior. But is it this a transversal as well? Okay. What would you call that angle right there? I would, what was it, what is the expression that should be used for? Is it 44 degrees? At least 44 degrees, right? Plus what? Plus W, right? 44, which you said is 22, yeah. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write right now 44, that, that angle is 44 plus W. Okay. What about this angle here? 86 plus what? Okay. When I take the picture out, do we see that we have these same side interior angles right now? So can we write the equation 44 plus W plus 86 plus Y equals 180? Okay. Now I'm going to write it that way just so we can talk about it a little bit easier. Shayla said 66 right off the bat, which is great, that's fine. But I only know that 66 if I found W first, right? You might have been a person that sees this relationship first before you solve for X, D, and W. This relationship is true, right? You wrote an equation that you know is true. As you're doing that in your work, guys, if it doesn't lead you anywhere, don't erase this. You've already written it down, okay? The, the worst thing that's going to happen is you waste some space on your paper, all right? Um, if you write equations down that are true, leave them. Even if they don't get you anywhere any, at, at first. Because as I progress through the problem, I'm going to find out that, yeah, W is 22. If W is 22, I replace that. Now can I solve for Y? Yeah. Okay? So, and, and that's something to keep in your mind all the time throughout the course. No matter what problem I'm on, okay? Write down relationships. Okay? And, and what we mean by relationships is, is these things that are connecting. Are they, are they creating equality? Are they creating uh, supplementary ideas? Add them together equal 180. Add them together equal 90. That kind of stuff. Develop so those equations and those relationships. And then eventually, with enough of those, some variables should be falling out. Okay? You should be able to solve for those things. Okay? Um, why would it seem to be, I had, I had like four or five people come up to me today trying to uh, solve for why. So I think that's important to talk about. Um, we kind of in a class yesterday with one like this. Um, it's, it's really the same concept. Okay? Um, Anybody remember what kind of shape that is? Trapezoid, okay? Um, so this one, I don't know if I said the word, what's this one called? A parallelogram, okay? There will be an entire chapter devoted to parallelogram, okay? Uh, and there's a couple sections devoted to trapezoids. Everything that we learn about parallel lines is going to be necessary when we talk about parallelogram. And that's going to be in like two or three chapters from now, all right? Uh, so this stuff that we're using right now is, is kind of uh, the fundamentals of the quadrilateral. The fundamentals, of, it doesn't even make sense looking at it, but when I deal with a triangle, okay, the fact, does anybody know how many degrees are in the three angles of a triangle? 
180, right? Do you know why? Okay, so do you know why there's 360 in a parallelogram? Okay, so there's 100, and we'll prove this, there's 180 degrees in that triangle because of parallel lines. But you don't see any parallel lines, do you? All right, we'll do that eventually, but, but we need to talk about parallel lines before we get to triangles. And the reason then that you've got 360 degrees in a parallelogram is because there's one triangle there, right? There is a second triangle right there, right? If there's 180 in the black one and there's 180 in the red one, there's 360 all together, okay? But all those facts that we're going to get to are based off of parallel lines. So we have to have a very good understanding of the first. Is that just not how I Right here? Okay. Yeah, that, that works. The, the, I, and that, that's, a, that's perfectly fine. I don't care that you guys do that. So Shayla's you, everybody says Shayla's using the idea in a triangle is 180 degrees. Okay? Um, not a fact that we talked about in the class yet, but if you want to use it, it's fine. But the way all the questions are structured is that you should be able to at least solve them not knowing that. Okay? Um, which, which hopefully the, the instruction we've seen with that uh, can prove that. So working with the trapezoid, okay. Um, if I look at that line right there, that line right there, they're parallel, right? Is this a transversal for them? Okay. So if I remove the picture. Can I say that this 3x and that x minus 12 have a relationship with one another? What are you going to say about them? Same side interior, so they are going to be careful. These are the ones that have 48 from the same size supplementary. 3x plus x minus, I'll let you solve that. I don't want to spend the time doing that. I think you solve that equation. Uh, then I've got to look over here. These are parallel, right? Same two, top and bottom lines. So what's the relationship there, as you say? All right, same size here. So 2y plus y plus 15 should equal 180. Okay. At times, guys, you're going to get multi-step equations. Those should be pretty easy to solve for x and y. Sometimes you're going to get the red one to have x and y in it. Sometimes you get the blue one to have x and y in it. Okay? And I want to do a couple of examples that are going to force that. So, um, kind of the rest of the, the period today, uh, I'm going to put up a picture. I want you to take a little bit of time to work through it, uh, and then we'll come back together and, and discuss maybe the several different routes we could have taken. So, I want to start with this one. Uh, the, so, my suggestion is to, to have these in your notes, to draw these in your, in your, in your notes so that you can work through them. Uh, there are times that just the programs that they use to create these pictures and type stuff in uh, are not conducive to making the picture small. Uh, the 14x minus 10 is that angle right there that I just color blue. That's what they're referring to. Okay. Um, give that one a shot, and we'll come back and talk about it in a couple minutes. All right, so if, if you're stuck on where to start, okay, it doesn't matter where you start. Start with a grouping of parallel lines. That's all we've been talking about, right? Start with one set of parallel lines, uh, and then choose a transversal that you can visually see intersect both of them. It would be kind of silly to start with those ones that I highlighted red, and then use this transversal here, right? They don't see it intersecting the other ones, not making the other four angles that we get with transversal. But if I choose this one, would you guys agree that those transversals and parallel lines create the eight angles that we talk about normally, right? Now I'm going to look at 2y and this angle here of 14x minus 10. Okay? Uh, and if I move the picture out, is there a link between them? Are they 
to gather alternate interior, alternate exterior corresponding, or same side interior. I can make them that way. I can move, I can transfer values, right? So if those two set up the way they are, one of them is an exterior angle, one of them is an interior angle, right? They're on alternate sides of the transversal. We don't have a way of naming them as a group of two. But we can do something like this. We can maybe move that one there, can't we? Why can I move that one there? Okay, so those two angles are vertical, okay? Um, that being said, those two angles now are same side what? Same side here. So what's the relationship? They're at that point. So if, but if you don't see that, if somebody has done this, if somebody said, well, I want to move that one down here, you see a linear pair here. Yeah. Okay, so I could use the same relationship, right? They, they have to 180. Could somebody have done this? Take the 2y and slide the 2y up there. Does that make sense? If I did that, so I really have left that one alone right there. So all of those kind of transferring of um, expressions exist because of the congruency relationships, right? And once we move enough of them, we can make a, a link that 2y plus 14x minus 10 equals 180. Okay? Now, whether you wrote that down or not, it's fine. I think a lot of people in the last class never even wrote that equation down. Did anybody write that down in here? Okay, good. Those of you that didn't raise your hand, you probably started over here with the other parallel line. Those parallel lines, that transversal, and now you had the, the 5x. And the 14x minus 10, if I take the picture out of the background, what are you going to know about that angle there and that angle there? Same side interior, right? So in doing that, we have 5x plus 14x minus 10 equals 180, right? That's the one that's nice because it gives me 19x equals 190. X is 10. Okay. So, so most of you probably then did not address specifically this equation. But if I've got that equation, can I plug in that 10, and this gives me 140 minus 10? So that will give me 2y plus 130 equals 180. Okay, so those of you that started with x equals 10 and found that first, did you have an equation that said 2y plus 130 equals 180? Okay. And if you did, that's because you did the same relationships that, that we did together when we came up with the first two parallel lines. We used the, the first two parallel lines to come up with our, our information. Solving that gives you 2y equals 50, y equals 25, right? Okay. Um, so again, like I said, I think most people probably did this, and that, that was 130, change that, move the 130 here, and now solve. Well, those two things should have to 180. You know, 2y plus 130 equals 180. Perfectly fine either way. Okay? My argument to you is, and the reason I wanted to do it this way, that equation didn't get me anywhere at the beginning. But I knew it was true. So don't wipe it away. Because if I wipe it away, and I do eventually find another equation that's all correct, I've got to come back and develop that again to solve for y. Okay? So writing down an equation that's true, it doesn't become useful right away, still keep it. Okay, the worst thing it's going to do is eat up a little space on your paper. All right, give that one a shot. Like shape-wise? Nothing. I mean, eventually, uh, now this, this is just something to think about. So I won't explain too much about it, but eventually, we could do something like that. So now it looks like a maybe a prism or something, right? Okay. Now if I had if I had the prism in my hand, this is something that we talked about geometric. If I had the prism in my hand, if it was a 3D rendering in my hand, that 5x minus y angle would actually be 90 degrees, right? Does that make sense? Okay. But in two dimensions, when I look at it that way in two dimensions, it's not 90 degrees, and, and that's something that we kind of try to address and, and discuss. Um, 
in regards to understanding two dimension ideas compared to three dimension ideas. Uh, but just generally speaking, it's just three parallel lines. Yeah, I, I, I doesn't have a name. Uh, but that, that's what happens. Like in real life, guys, you, there, there really isn't just always just two parallel lines. There are some situations where that happens. I mean, you look out in the courtyard, you see all types of parallel lines out in the courtyard. Okay? Actually, what you look through to the courtyard has all types of parallel lines, doesn't it? A the windows created a bunch of parallel lines, a bunch of horizontal parallel lines, a bunch of vertical parallel lines. Look at the ceiling grid. Look at the grid of the, uh, the structure of the light. Okay? Um, the brick patterns on the, on the wall, the floor, all types of parallel lines everywhere. Okay? Um, Usually, a lot of those parallel lines are horizontal and vertical, so we've got a lot of 90 degree angles. They don't have to be, and your transversals don't have to be perpendicular. If I got rid of that bottom transversal, this or sorry, bottom parallel line, didn't pay attention to it. Don't pay attention to the 130. Don't pay attention to the 5x plus y. What would you tell me about the two things that are left over? Supplementary, right? Same side into your right. Okay. Uh, now, some of you might prefer to, you know, extend that, extend that. And that, so it kind of looks like that traditional set of parallel lines cut by transversal. I know my tracing is not great. Uh, but we do see the 5x minus y plus 150 should equal 180, right? Okay. Uh, now, if we were to cover that up, cover that one up, Cover that thing up up there. Okay, what are you going to tell me about these two angles? Let's so supplementary as well. It's the same relationship. Okay. So now I get 5x plus y plus 130 equals 180. Okay. Um, now this one, I, and I, this is just what I always do. I say it's the safest way to do it is when you were taught in algebra 1. When you have two equations that have two variables in them, you want your x's, then your y's, then your equal sign, and then your constants uh, in that order. Okay? This would work if we just started adding straight down right now. Okay? But then I'm going to add 150 and 130. I'm going to add 180 and 180. And that's a little bit more work little math-wise than we want. So let's write this way. So 5x minus y equals 30. Okay, can I rewrite this one as 5x plus y equals 50? Does that make sense to everyone? That's not the only way you have to do it. But if I do it that way, and I stack these two equations on top of one another, what's going to happen to my y? They can't stop. That's why I wanted to use this approach. Because before I did anything, as I was writing my equations, that negative y and that positive y kind of jumped off the stage at me. They're additive inverses. I know they're going to cancel out. So it gives me 10x is equal to 80, right? So x has got to be 8. So if x is 8, if x is 8, can I plug that back in right there? And you get 40 plus y equals 50. So what's y going to be? Y is going to be 10. Okay? Absolutely fine to do it that way. I think that's the fast way to do it. Okay? But some of you might have said this. You might have said, uh, if I look at that blue equation, can I rewrite y is equal to 50 minus 5x? Does that make sense? Can I now come down here into this black equation, and wherever I see y, replace it with that quantity? 
So it'd be 5x. Now, this is, this is where it gets kind of tricky sometimes with our math. It's minus y, so it's minus that quantity. Whenever you're substituting quantities, two objects, three objects, four objects, substitute them first in parentheses because it will remind you then that you have to distribute that negative. So I'm going to get 5x minus 50 plus 5x equals 30. And then the 10 x's, add my 50 to both sides, and I get 80, right? They give me x to be 8. Does that make sense? Now, the benefit of that, the benefit of doing that then, there's more work there involved solving for x. But then we have a payoff in solving for y. Because now I've got to plug 8 in up here. I get 50 minus 5 times 8, get 50 minus 40, and y kind of comes naturally. Does that make sense? Where using the system, it was a little bit more work to solve for y. So that's kind of the payoff of maybe using substitution. That's the crux of the course, guys. The problem with this course, I think, for some people is you've got alternate approaches. You can do it more than one way. Okay? Um, and I'm going to try to show you that stuff. I know it gets frustrating to you understand what's going on, to, to watch me do it three, four, five times, to ask questions about it, three, four, five different approaches. The more that we can do that, even if you're solid at it right now, you understand, it's going to benefit you when you get to algebra 2. It's going to benefit you when you get to college algebra, trigonometry, calculus, um, because there are times when you have to use alternative approaches that maybe you're not accustomed to or familiar with because you've kind of neglected that in previous courses. Um, so try to open you up to as much algebra as we can. We can all get better at algebra. Okay? Um, you know, whoever is the best at algebra in the world can still get better at it. Okay? Uh, so that's kind of the approach that I take with you guys. Um, I've got a worksheet for you. 